Iran and world powers reached a framework agreement on Thursday to curb Iran's nuclear program for at least a decade. The deal opens the way for further negotiations on a final settlement to calm Western fears that Iran is seeking to build an atomic bomb. In return, international sanctions against the Islamic Republic will be eased. This is how U.S. President Barack Obama described the deal. I am convinced that if this framework leads to a final comprehensive deal, it will make our country, our allies, and our world safer. This has been a long time coming. Iran pledges to shut more than two-thirds of its installed centrifuges, capable of producing uranium that could be used to build a bomb. All sanctions on Iran will remain in place until a final deal is brokered by the self-imposed deadline of June the 30th. Many details still need to be worked out, but experts believe it will be much harder to reach a final deal than it was to agree the framework accord. Israel is one of the most vocal critics, saying that the deal threatens the existence of the country. However, Iran's foreign minister is hopeful. All of the participants in this process were interested in seeing to it that this resolution gets implemented, that if we reach an agreement, we can implement the agreement. We're not looking for excuses to violate them. The US and Russia put their disagreements over Ukraine aside in brokering the agreement. However, the Kremlin is expected to lose vital oil revenues. Iran has massive oil reserves and is expected to spare no time restoring output lost since sanctions were tightened. And with a bigger market supply comes a lower oil price, which means another hit for Russia's economy. European states reliant on Russian energy but worried by Moscow's actions in Ukraine could also turn to Iran to diversify their supplies. Yet Moscow has other interests in Iran, for example in selling military equipment. Newsweek reported that with Tehran's aggressive regional policies, being friends could be good for Russia's arms industry. Iran is known to be allies with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, Lebanese terror group Hezbollah and with insurgents in Yemen. Moscow would also be involved in supplying fuel for nuclear facilities in the Iranian city of Bashur. Like Iran, Russia wants to seek to challenge the world power status quo by challenging the United States. And with Washington also attempting to normalize relations with longtime enemy Cuba and now Iran, Moscow must now use its leverage to prevent what it sees as a U.S. dominating even further.